In this video, I will talk about the F-curve node, which is very much similar to the change range node. I talked about them in the previous video, but this is maybe a little more powerful because, well, it's a curve and we can remap values non-linearly. So let's have a look at this node. So we have an X value as the input and the Y value as the output. And if we look at this curve editor, what we can see here is that, um, well, we've got this uh, coordinate system, x-axis, which this relates to, the input, and the y-axis, the output. So if we had, let's say, and let me change this to show the grid, if we had a value of 0.2 coming in, the way to read this graph is, well, like I said, it's the x-value, so we go here, find the x-value, in this case 0.2, go up until we're on the curve and then go over and this value here in this case if this input and the output are the same this will be the output so let's actually remap this line here line of points as we can see it's going from 0 to 10 in x and maybe I want to remap it from 0 to 10 to a 0 to 5 in X. So let's connect this to the X and this to the X. Now what I can see here is not really what I want. So, so again, the X axis is a source range and the Y axis is our target range. So first of all, we have to make sure the source range is correct. Since these were going from 0 to 10, I will have to make sure that the x-axis reflects that. So I'm going to put this to 10. And now we can see all the points are squished to 0 to 1 range because that's our y value here. But I want it to be 5. So that's done. And the cool thing is, of course, we can change this to Bezier. And now we have the handles here, the tangents, to remap things non-linearly. But maybe what I want to do is I don't want to remap the x value, but maybe I want to use the x value to shape the y or define the y position of those points. So I'm going to go to the presets and go back to the linear curve between 0 to 1 on both axes. And I will connect this to the Y. So now what we can see if I zoom out a little bit, that everything above 1 gets clamped because this curve goes flat. So we can change this by using one of those options here. This works for pre and post. So maybe I'll set this to cycle. This will go on forever now. And we can see this reflected in our points. But there's also oscillate, which mirrors it across the y-axis. We can use linear. This will actually give us a little handle here. We can define the angle like that. Let's say at a point here and set this to relative repeat and we can see the whole thing gets repeated relatively. And that's pretty much uh, the F curve. We can change the linear uh, the interpolation also to constant so it's like a step curve in the graph editor. Now I have a slightly more complex example where I've got a cylinder. So this is just a polycylinder with a lot of uh, subdivisions. And what I want to do with this cylinder is I want to move all the points along their normals. However, I want to use an F-curve to define where that happens and where it doesn't happen. So basically, in this case, along the Y. So if I hide this, plug this in, 
what we can see here is I'm using an F curve, which is down here. I'm using this F curve to create these, and this keeps disappearing, to create these gaps. We can see it's set to cycle. So if I drag this out, this will be bigger. Pull it in more of those. And I can also change how strong it is. But maybe if I undo this a couple steps, oh, it doesn't want to undo. Uh, maybe I also want to have another F curve to drive um, sort of like a fall off where this happens. So I can actually layer F curves on top of one another or multiply them to get this effect. So if I plug this in, so see I'm, I've got this F curve here multiplied by this one. And now this F curve here will define where this effect happens. So the F curve is super useful. You can use it in so many different ways. Uh, for instance, you could also use it for animation, which would be another video. But yeah, hopefully that's useful. Cheers.